Can you discuss the genetics of cancer a little bit? A lot of people have it in their family. Are those people doomed to get the same thing their parents did, or what can they do to maybe alter their genetic course and, and try to prevent that? Yeah, I don't think they're doomed. Um, and, but, you know, to talk about the genetics of cancer, you really have to talk about uh, the big debate that's kind of going on in cancer right now between uh, scientists. And the big debate surrounds uh, cancer metabolics versus cancer genetics, right? The big question is, uh, what comes first? Uh, metabolic abnormalities, right, in the way cancer cells make, or cells make energy in general, or is it genetic abnormalities that cause that? Which one comes first, right? Um, but, you know, even the genetic components, because, you know, m both sides agree that both are involved, right? It's just, it's an argument of which one's first. But when you look at it overall, even on the genetic side of things, uh, there's two different things. There's one is uh, somatic mutations. That is um, gene abnormalities that are passed from one cell to another cell during cell division. These are acquired by the cell, right? That's something totally different than uh, germline mutations, like hereditary, uh, hereditary correlation. That's when a gene is passed from parent to child. Those are two different things. And when you look at the hereditary connection, that's a very small percentage. It's under 10%. It's a very, it's a, I think it's like 5 to 7%. It's very small. And uh, when you look at it also, you know, there's, there's research actually showing that uh, these hereditary connections may also damage cell respiration, right, which is something that we can definitely control. So when you look at it overall, even if you do have a hereditary component, you have to look at all of the different anti-cancer variables in life that people tend to ignore, right? We tend to have high stress, we have uh, highly inflammatory foods, uh, we tend to have blood sugar, we eat a lot of sugar, generally, uh, you know, as a society. Um, there's just, there's so many pro-cancer forces that are just normal. So, you know, I think if, even if you do have a hereditary connection, if you remove some of those things, um, you eat a good diet that has uh, a lot of anti-cancer compounds, where your blood sugar is, is uh, well-regulated. Um, cooking with the right kinds of oils because the wrong kinds of oils cause inflammation and it causes cell respiration to get damaged and, and so on and so on. Um, get some of these things, get exercise, right? You have to exercise and you have to rest. Um, you know, do meditation, for instance, because that'll help control your stress hormones and your immune system, how it behaves. So, you know, I think if we were to incorporate more of these things into our normal life, I don't think that cancer would be as big of an issue as it is today.